Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Do I have any witnesses out there that you know that the Lord is good? Come on, let me see you stand up on your feet and open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for keeping me in my right mind. I thank you for making provisions for me throughout this day. You protected me. You kept me all night while I slept through every stop sign, through every stop signal. Whatever it was, he protects you from dangers both seen and unseen. Do I have any witnesses out there? I know it might not be a packed house tonight, but where two or three are gathered in his name, he's going to show up. Some power is going to come in this place. Amen. And it's all about if we have holy hands lifted up, thanking the Lord and being receptive to who he is and what he is and what he does. Amen. So while you're standing, we're going to pray. Dear most heavenly gracious father, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for every day that you've given us. We thank you for being a man of your word, living by the characteristics of who you said you are. God, you have never left us nor forsake us. Now on this evening, God, we are lifting up in prayer our hearts, God, that you will cleanse it and that you will make it right, Heavenly Father. God, take this heart of stone that we have sometime when we're disobedient, God, and we go against your word and we go against your will. God, and make it a heart of flesh, turn it into flesh and soften it that we might hear your voice and be obedient to you, Father God. For you said, if you love me, you'll obey me. God, help us to obey you and follow your word, God, for you know the plans that you have for us and they're of good and not bad, God. They are for us to prosper, God, and not suffer. And for that, we say thank you. We thank you for being a loving God. We thank you for being a kind God. We thank you for just being a good God. You are so faithful to us, God. And if we had 10,000 tongues, it still wouldn't be enough to say thank you, Lord. So on today, we decree and declare our thankfulness to you from the bottom of our hearts. God, transform our minds, not just only our hearts, but our minds in the way that we think, God, and the way that we act, God. We want you to fill our bodies up with your Holy Spirit because it is only by your spirit can we live right, can we do right, can we be right. Now, God, we thank you for all things and we believe you for all things in the precious, in the mighty, and in the matchless name of Jesus, every believer said amen, clapping your hands as our deacons come. Good evening. Good evening. We're glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this evening we will have the scripture from <clears throat> Matthew, the 26th chapter, starting at the 26th to the 35th verse. And read as following. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it. And gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat this, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, drink you all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for men for remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And when you have sung a hymn, they, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Then said Jesus to them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I not be offended. But Jesus said to him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night, 
before the cock crow, thou should deny me thrice. Peter said to him, though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said all the disciples. We read you the following verses from Matthew 26, 26 to 35th verse. And the word is always blessed. Shall we pray? Dear Father in heaven, we come to you, Lord. We bow down heads and humble hearts, Father. We come to you, Father, empty before a full and flowing fountain. And we ask you to fill us up, Lord. Father, some have tossed and turned all night long, Lord. Wonder where that way wayward child may be, where that, that daughter may be. Some were wondering how they were going to pay that bill, Father. And some, Father, are just confused and lonely, Lord. But, Father, we know that you came, Father, that you would give us life and life more abundantly. And in you, we have everything that we need, Lord. For those who are searching, Father, for those who are seeking peace and seeking uh, hope in their lives, Father, we ask that you would just help us be a light, Father, and show them the way to go, Father. Lord, we don't come here for ourselves, but we come to be a beacon of light wherever we go. So, Lord, help us to be a reflection of you, Father. We decrease, Father, so that you may increase in us, Father. Lord, we come to you empty so we, we can be filled, Lord. Lord, we come into this place, Lord, because it's the place that's set aside for believers. But we know that this is only a building, Father. We are the people. We are the sheep of your pasture, Father. And we ask that you would just give us the strength, Father. Give us the courage to stand in these dark times, Lord. Lord, man has risen up, Father, and he's, he's wicked. But, Lord, we know that you came in a time of darkness to be a light, Father. And look, we know that as long as you're in this world, Father, you will be that light, Father. For you say, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. But we first got to yield to you, Father. So we give ourselves to you, Father. Lord, we say, use us, Father. We open our hearts and say, come on in, Father. You're welcome in this place. Lord, let the revival begin right now within us, Lord, so that we can go and touch somebody, Father. Let what comes out of our mouth reach somebody, Father, who's downtrodden, who's burdened, Lord. Lord, we know that all things are possible if we only believe. So we just want to say thank you right now, Father, for giving us a way out, of Father. We know that when we come into this life, Father, of Christianity, that the way is not going to always be easy. But we know that you will be a light, Father, and you will show us the right way to go. Father, you gave us your spirit to lead us and guide us to all truth. Thank you, Jesus, for being all powerful. Thank you, Jesus, for being all wise, for being all knowing. Thank you, Jesus, for having all power. There's no power greater than yours, Father. Lord, we decrease while you increase in us. Fill us up, Father, right now. Come on in, Holy Spirit. Lord, we're not counting what we don't have. We just want to say thank you for what we do have. You've given us so much to be thankful for. Lord, we thank you. Lord, when I was headed in a downward spiral, you snatched me up and said, no, not so. And I just want to thank you right now, Father, for showing me a better way to live, Father. I know I'm not perfect, Lord, but I know that you are. So I strive, Father, to be more like you, Father. Help us to remember that we should imitate you, Father. Somebody asked, what would Jesus do? You've already shown us what you did, Father. You gave, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for showing us that forgiveness is the way to all eternity, Lord. Thank you for showing us that forgiveness is the way to freedom. For when we forgive, Lord, we free ourselves from burdens, Father. We forgive. We show that we're more like you, Father. Even with that supreme example of you being on the cross, Father, being persecuted and spat upon and having a crown of thorns placed on your head and a, a spear stuck in your side and, and drinking wine of vinegar when you thirsty. You say, Father, forgive them. Oh, Lord, help us, Lord, to know that forgiveness is the way, Father. Lord, right now we ask that if there's anybody here right now that's burdened, 
If there's anybody here right now that's lonely, if there's anybody here right now that's in need of anything, Lord, help them to know that you have everything in the palm of your hands. Lord, we ask that you would look upon us right now, Father. We're over in this vineyard laboring, Father. Sometimes we get burdened and sometimes our footsteps get heavy. Sometimes our leader may get tired, Lord. But we ask that you would give us a little more strength so that we could run this race, Father. We know when we complete this race that you promised us, Father, a home somewhere, Father, in your kingdom. And Lord, that's all we want to see, Father, is that place that you set aside for us. You have promised us, Lord, that we have a home somewhere, Father. And Lord, I know wherever it is, there's joy. Wherever it is, there's peace. But Lord, we don't have to wait till we get to that place. Lord, you can give us all these things right now. All we have to do is confess, Father, and believe. And we believe, Father. We confess, Father, that we are weak, but you are strong. Guide us, great Jehovah. Lead us, Lord. Help us, Father. Help our pastor, Lord, wherever he is right now. Keep him safe, Father. Keep his wife safe. Keep his children safe. Keep his grandchildren, Lord. Keep his children's children safe. Lord, we ask right now that you give us the wisdom, Father, and give us the courage, Father, to be sheep. Help us, Lord, to know that we must follow, Father. You've given us a leader, Father. All we have to do is follow. So, Lord, we thank you right now for a leader who has vision. We thank you for a man of God who is a prophet, who can see beyond what we see. We ask, Lord, that you help his dream, Father, come to reality. And, Lord, right now we just want to close and say thank you for all the good night, the good, good days and the good nights that you've blessed us with. Thank you for when we didn't know which way we were going to turn, you made a way. Thank you for when we didn't have a dime, but Lord, you made a way, Father, through somebody who saw our need. So help us to remember, Lord, that we are to give. And when we give out, Father, all we have to do is ask for you to give us a little bit more, Father. And we can share even more. So in all these things we've asked for, Father, we ask in the, the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus,
There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. There is power, power, yet there is wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the land. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, oh, the blood inside my name. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, oh, the blood and sun, the name, oh, the blood, oh, the blood, oh, the blood and sun, my name, oh, the blood and sun. My name, how you know it, how you know it, oh, the blood that signed my name, how you know it, how you know it, Jesus, blood that signed my name, how you know it, how you know it, it's blood that my name, oh, the blood, the sun, my name, Jesus told me, Jesus told me, oh, his blood, the sun, my name, Jesus told me, Jesus told me, his blood and sign my name. Jesus told me. He told me. His blood and sign my name. Oh, the blood and sign my name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your blood and sign my name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. His blood and sign my name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your blood and sign my name. Oh, your blood. Oh, your blood, oh, your blood, the sun, my name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen, amen. How many of you know us something about the blood of Jesus? Amen. How many of you know there's power in the blood of Jesus? There's healing in the blood of Jesus. There's deliverance in the blood of Jesus. Have I got any believers out there? How many of you know that 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 the blood and signs your name and the blood covers you and it keeps you? Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but I'm glad we serve a good God like that who will sacrifice his own son for my own sins Thank you. what kind of god would do that i tell you he's a loving one amen Thank you, Jesus. amen 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 
Well, we thank God for this opportunity to be here this week. How many of you have enjoyed Holy Week so far this week? Has it been a blessing to you? Haven't all of our lecturers and our speakers been good thus far? Well, there are five days in the week and we're on day four, which means we have one more day. And that one more day was a good day. And I know the name of that day is Friday. And when you put good in front of it, what do you get? It's a good Friday. Does anybody know why it was a good Friday? Because we won salvation. Amen. Jesus Christ defeated Satan, our enemy, and therefore he is defeated. Amen. How many people happy about that? The devil might pick at you. He might mess with you, but he can't never get to you. Why? Because we're covered by the blood. Amen. 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 So on Friday night, and our uh, flyer is on the screen. On Friday night, we're going to have, actually, we have two services Friday. One at 12 noon by our very own Reverend Justin Williams. Amen. And then we'll also have Friday evening at 7 p.m. with Pastor Alex Ambrose of Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. So we're waiting into great anticipation for that, and we are know that God will show up as he has every night this past week and will tonight. Amen? Amen, amen. And so now it comes the time for our lecturer. Amen? Amen. And this young man's name is Brother Devin Spivey. Amen? And he is the son of our very own Deacon Peter Spivey. Amen? Amen, amen, and we're so glad to have him here today with us. Amen. Go ahead and take the flyer off the screen. We're so glad to have him here with us today. Amen, and I know Deacon Spivey and Sister Spivey's back there. How you doing, Sister Spivey? We know that you two are proud and that the fruits of your labor will not be in vain because it will be evident tonight through your son whom God has anointed. Amen. So without further ado, let's make him feel welcome. Stand up on your feet, put your hands together, and let's welcome Brother Devin Spivey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How's everybody doing today? All right, first I wanna just give an honor to God who's ahead of my life, to Pastor Smith, to Miss Smith, to the congregation, to my parents, Deacon Spivey, Miss Spivey, old friends, family, and last but not least, my beautiful daughters. All right, so I was asked, by Miss Peggy to come up here today and speak on John chapter 12, verse 23. All right, and it speaks on glorifying God. And it goes as follows. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified. Now, I want to start, before I start, I want to pray first. Lord, in your son Jesus' name, just bless us today. May your spirit fall upon us gracefully. May you guide me as I try to express and illustrate your word in the best way that I can. Let me that I be a conduit, a vessel to speak your word the way it needs to be spoke and illustrate it to those that need to hear it. Just bless me right now, Lord, and I thank you in advance in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Excuse me, I apologize. But I can speak on that verse without giving the backdrop <clears throat> to what it meant to me. Now, all of this is in the event of Jesus getting ready for the Passover, for the resurrection. 
Now, when you read over the, the first verse, on the, the verses 1 through 22, it goes as follows. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint of pure nard. Now, pure nard is lotion, perfume, fragrance. Now, she pulled out some nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with his hair, with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas, his carrier, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and money given to the poor? That's what Judas said. It was worth the year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As a keeper of, money, of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Just to give you a basis where I'm reading from, I'm reading from the NIV version. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for, my day, for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Right there, the Lord would say, remember me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came. Not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For an account of many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. Jesus come to Jerusalem as a king. The 12th verse says, the next day that the great, a great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took, they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, which is hallelujah. Melanie, that means hallelujah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it was written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's coat. At first, his disciples did not understand all of this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things have been written about him and that these things have been done to him. Now, the crowd that was with them when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead Continue to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, see, this is us. This is getting us nowhere. See, even Jesus was hated on. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Now, right here is when Jesus starts to predict his death. Watch. Now, there were some Greeks among who went up to the, went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was with, who was with Basita in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, well, we, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went, and tell, Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew told Philip, and in turn told Jesus. 
Jesus replied in verse 23. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Now, that was the verse that Miss Peggy asked me to elaborate on. Now, to be glorified is major because he gave a plethora of examples throughout the book of John, from the woman touching his cloth and becoming well, from him, from him rebuking and releasing the young boy from demons to the most recent, the most recent before the Passover, raising Lazarus from the dead. Now we did all these things to prepare not just his followers, but the disciples that the hour is going to come that I'm not going to be here no more. I'm going to need for you to do as if I was still here. So all these miracles and all these examples that he was doing, it was just to show that God is real. His teachings are real. He's a true miracle worker. That's why the Pharisees wanted to kill him. So to glorify God, Glorify. Let's, let's think about glorify. I, I can remember when I was a kid, because this whole thing to me is you have to remember. We forget to remember to give him his praise. Even the small things add up. I can remember being in here, the same church with Miss Bernice. Swayzar, God bless her soul. That was, that was my godmother. She bought me a white Easter suit. She bought me a suit for Easter, a white suit. I'll never forget it. And every Palm Sunday, we used to all on, we used to put the branches, the palm branches in, in my lapel, you know? And things like that, kids don't forget. And I was just thankful that before she passed, I was able to let her know that I was thankful for that suit. I like that white suit. I like white suits to this day because of that suit. But I gave her her flowers while she was here. I gave her her glory while she was there. That's what we have to do. We have to sit back and, and, and give people and give situations their flowers when they're here. Because we forget. The people, they, the people that was following Jesus, they forgot. They forgot about the little boy that had a demon. They forgot about the, the woman that touched his cloth. They had to see it again when he rose Lazarus from the dead. So that just shows you that you have to give thanks on the steps, on your way there, in between the blessings. I remember, I got things to be thankful for. I got things that I was up that I was, gave him his glory for. I remember when my mom was on the bed and they thought she was gone and she came right back. That was God. I, I remember when my dad was on his bed and they thought he wasn't going to make it. He's still right here right now. That was God. We got to give him his glory and give him their flowers while they're still here, while we remember, while they can remember. And that's what he was trying to get them to understand, to remember me. That's what the resurrection is. Remember me. I'm doing this for you, for your sins. All of that was to lead up to him being slain and massacred for us. And he was getting us prepared for that. 
And that's what he get us prepared for in life. That's why he give us parents. When he don't give us parents, he give us people that's wise to guide us. And hopefully that can steer us the right way. Because we tend to forget the things that we was taught until we got to sit back and think of the mistake that we made. I'm thankful for this moment right now. You know, so I want to say thank you because everything happens for a reason. For you to call me and ask me to do this, I really appreciate that. So I want to sit here and give you your flowers while I'm standing here. I appreciate you. Thanks a lot. And in closing, I just want to, I just want to say, be thankful for the small things because what you think small now might be big later on. Thank you. Y'all have a good one. And amen, amen. We thank God for that. Those words from our lecturer, Minister Spivey. Let's give him another hand of praise. Amen, amen, amen. Well, it's giving time. Look at your neighbor and say, it's giving time. It's, giving time. it's not time to be quiet. It's not time to be sad. It's not time to feel like they're trying to get my money again. Because this is not just giving money, but this is an exchange of worship of our thankfulness to God from us to say thank you, Lord, for enabling me to be able to make a way for myself. Thank you, Lord, for me being able to pay my bills and have food on my table and buy my kids nice clothes, amen? Because those gifts and talents we have to do this job and get those wages is not of any of our own, but it's what God enabled us to do, amen? And it's his power and his wisdom at work in us when we are perfecting in our gifts. Amen. 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 And to those of you who are watching online on Facebook and YouTube, we thank you for being a part with us this evening. And you can give at www.nbbcdetroit.com. Again, that's www.nbbcdetroit.com and click the give tab and you can select your form of giving, amen, amen, amen. So if I can get a deacon to come on to the front and grab the basket right there for me, and we're gonna get a little upbeat music going on because this is a reason why we, ha we have a reason to be joyful, amen? Amen, amen. So an usher is going to come and direct you from the back, or actually we don't have an usher, so I'm gonna direct us from the back. If we can all stand up. And you can start coming from the very back. You can just come on down and make your way. No matter where you are, you can come on down and make your donation to the Lord. Let us bow our heads in prayer. 
Father God, we thank you for this offering, God, these gifts and the giver, God. We know that it will come back to us in full measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. For to trust you, God, is to know that everything is going to be all right. Every need will be met. And for that, we say thank you. Thank, thank you. you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And now at this time, we're going to have a musical selection by none other than Sister Patty Johnson. Let's put our hands together. The climb is never easy when you're trying to reach the top of the mountain. The climb is never easy when you stop and take that look back from where you come. It seems your troubles are catching up with you. They're gaining on every hand. But if you keep your eye on the prize and finish the climb, God will never let you fall. Oh, the climb is never easy when you try to reach the top of the mountain. Oh, the climb is never easy when you stop to take that look back from where you come. It seems your troubles are catching up with you. They're getting on every hand. But if you keep your eye on that prize and finish the climb, knowing God will. Never let you fall. He'll never let you fall. Oh, it seems your burdens are too much to bear. He'll never let you fall. Just put your trust in Jesus. He'll be, he'll be right there. Keep your eye on the prize. Finish the climb. Knowing God will never let Unmovable, 
hill and they still run and not get weary and you can say yes 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 yes, yes, yes lord yes lord yes 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 lord yes lord in the morning yes yes no day yes in the midnight hours Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say yes. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Keep your eye on the prize and finish your climb. Knowing God will never let you. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Amen, amen. What a beautiful selection. Amen. We thank you. Thank you for your anointing. I heard you wrote that. Amen. And that's not an easy task, is it? How many of you can know how to write a song? All right. It's not so easy to do. Even if you do know how, you have to get the impartation. The Lord has to give you some wisdom, some inspiration. And also, it takes some experience. Amen. You can't just sing about stuff you have no idea about because you're going to sing it like you don't know what you're singing about. But when you can sing a song because you've done been through something and you know God's goodness and his faithfulness to you, the young people say it hit different. Amen. <laughs> and it does. Amen. 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 Well, now we've come to this part in the evening where our it is the hour of preaching. Amen. Amen. How many of you are excited about what the Lord has to say on this evening? Amen, amen, amen. This young lady who was going to be ministering the gospel was my Sunday school teacher. So everything I know, I got it from her. All my biblical knowledge, all my understanding, she helped cultivate it. Amen. And then I made a conscientious decision to know the Lord for myself. Amen. But it takes people like that. There's a saying that says it takes a village to raise a child. Amen. And New Bethel truly is a village of support. And so I'm not going to go on anymore because she's standing up and she's ready. So I, it must be a word in her heart. So I know we are in anticipation. So let's just stand on our feet and receive now at this time, Minister Avis Dalton. Amen. 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 God indeed is a good God, and he is worthy to be praised. Amen. All right, Sister Patty, please don't go nowhere. Amen. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. Father God, this is a day we should never forget. Oh, Father God, we thank you because you shed your blood for us, oh God. You became a sacrificial lamb. Lord, we thank you, Lord. This holy week, we thank you, Lord. Help us to remember Help us to remember you, oh God. Help us to remember you and all the things that you do for us. You have done for us, and we thank you, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Believe in yourself and in your dreams, though the impossible things may seem. Someday, somehow, you'll make it through with the goals in life you have in view. Mountains fall and seas divide before the one in the stride. It takes a hard road day by day, moving obstacles away. Believe in yourself and in your plan. Say not, I cannot, but I can. The prizes of life we fail to win is because we doubt that power within. Amen. And Sister Pat, you just don't know. I needed that song for what I'm about to do right now, that he would never fail you. Amen. And I thank my sisters, my friends, my family, and I thank each and every one of you for coming on this holy week. And I thank you, and I just ask that you will continue to think about this week. Think about what God has done for us. Amen, Sister Patty. And as I sing this song, I just need you to pray. There's an evangelist, Esther Smith, who I'm loved to. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Ever since I was a little girl, ever since I was a little girl, Ever since I was a little girl, this is one 
Hey man, one lady that I love to hear her sing. And I always wanted to sing, but God didn't bless me with that gift. But I'm going to sing it anyhow. <laughs> hey man, yes. Because I can do all things, amen, through Christ which strengthens me. Amen. Sister Patty. To describe your grace, he will take all day finding words to say and to show my gratitude it will take all year finding words to say but what can i give in exchange for all you've done what can i give for grace has begun what can I give oh, oh, ooh, ooh, to say thanks for all you've done? You were there whenever I cried. Lord, you wiped many tears right from my eyes. You were there when I failed to pray. Your love kept me from so much pain. What can I give in exchange for all you've done? What can I give to Christ? your only son what can i give to say thanks for all you've done amen amen oh hallelujah hallelujah what can i give what can i give to a god who has done so much what can i give to christ his only son which can I give? I give him my life. And I have dedicated my life to God. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Minister DeMarco. Thank you, Brother Spivey. Amen. I remember Spivey when he was little. Now he ministering the word of God. Amen. God is good. John chapter 12. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at, with him at the table. Then took Mary a pound of ointment, a spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the anointment. ointment. Then said one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which shall betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burial has she kept this. For the poor always have you, but me you have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus to death, because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. On the next day, much people that would come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna! Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he found a young ass, sat therein as it written, Fear not, daughters of Zion. Behold, the king cometh on an ass's coat. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, they remember that these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. 
the people therefore that was with him when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. For this cause, the people also met him for that they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, perceive ye now how ye prevail nothing. Behold, the whole world is gone after him. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which is at Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him saying, sir, we would see Jesus. Philip coming and telling Andrew, and Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Amen. Amen. This reads God's word. The hour has come. The hour is here. You are here. There's three points I want to talk about in this lesson. One is Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. So during this time, it was a feast in Jerusalem. Everyone was gathered together, people far and near. They was coming to Jerusalem. Not just for the sake of Jesus, but they also wanted to see who? Lazarus. Amen. Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. They wanted to see, is this true? They probably heard. They probably heard. I'm sure they heard far and near that Lazarus is alive. That Lazarus is alive. So today I just want to talk about seeing is believing. Amen. Seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. We have to believe. Amen. The only way to get to the kingdom of God is belief. So here it is. The, the people are all gathered. Foreigners, far and near, had come to Jerusalem again to see at Bethany because Lazarus and Mary. When I was going over this lesson, I was like, all these Marys in the Bible. Now, which Mary is the Mary that anointed Jesus' feet? Which Mary? And then I looked at John. John was the only disciple that said, Jesus married Mary's sister, Mary, Martha's sister. Hey, Amen. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> Martha's sister. So here it is. She anointed Jesus' feet with costly oil, as uh, Brother Spivey was saying. And this oil perfume, it was worth some money. I was looking at Brother Spivey's shoes. That's worth some money. <laughs> Amen. Very costly. So I say this lesson comes right on. But in spite of what Judas said, because we know Judas. Anybody know somebody named Judas? Amen. Judas reminds me of the same as who? You don't hear nobody's name. This lady name. You all know you don't hear nobody that name, do you? So when I looked at Judas, I thought about Judas just like some of us. We just come to paying our tithes and offering. I remember growing up, my sister Diane, I remember growing up. Mama made sure that we had something to give to the Lord. If it was 50 cents, a quarter, we had something. And then as I got older, amen, I realized the importance of giving to God. And we used to say, Mama, we need this. Mama, we need that. Mom, we, need, we didn't need it. We just wanted it. So we used to always say, we need some new shoes. Would you put your money in the church? But now guess what? Amen. Here I am doing the same thing that mama taught me to do, pay my tithes. And then it hurts me sometimes when I hear people say, you putting all of that in church? So again, we're looking at some Judas. There's some Judas's right here in New Bethel. There's some Judas's here in New Bethel. They don't want to see you give. They don't want to see you blessed. They're not doing what they should be doing to be blessed, and then they want to stop you from being blessed. So here it is, Mary anointed Jesus' feet. And back in the day, I believe that was um, brother was talking about how the women were always looked down upon. And I used to wonder, why is women in the Bible 
always looked down upon. So here's Mary. Mary did something that women would not do. Mary took her hair loose, and after she anointed his feet, she used her hair to dry. So only a husband was to see you, but Mary thought enough of herself that she wanted to do something for the king. What have you done for the king, amen? What have you did, done for the king? What have, the offering was just here. What, have, what, did, what did you give for the king, amen? We have to put ourselves. Mary didn't care that they was at the dinner. Mary didn't care who was at the dinner. We talk about the Pharisees, the scribes. We talk about a lot of religious people were at this dinner. But Mary didn't care. Mary needed to do what Mary needed to do. And we need to do what we need to do, amen, to reach the kingdom of God. So again, Mary anointed Jesus with the head in Judas. She cared nothing about no poor. However, amen, when I was going through this lesson, I was looking at Jesus knew who Judah was going to do. But Judas was still, what, in charge of the, in charge of the money, amen. So you hear a lot of people say, they don't do, I ain't put my money in the church. They don't do nothing but steal it. The preachers don't do nothing but wear fancy clothes, fancy shoes. So why should I put my money in church? But this thing, that was Judas. The Lord knew that Judas was going to be the one to betray him. But he was still in charge of the money. Amen. So no matter where we are in our stage of life, as long as we got God in charge of us, we don't have to worry about what other people say. Amen. Even right now, here we are in church. And I thank God for each and every one of you that's here tonight. And some people still don't want to come back to church because they say of the pandemic. But guess what? They're going to work. Amen. They're going to the malls. They're going everywhere, Sister Nick, because they go everywhere. But they want to come to the Lord's house where they can receive their healing, where they can receive their blessing, where they can deny themselves and come to Christ. So again, during this Passover time in our lives, let's remember Christ. Let us remember Christ who done so much for us. And I thank God for Evangelist Esther Smith because she taught me so much. Because of where I am right now, I know Esther Smith, Evangelist Esther Smith had something to do with it. Because as a little girl, I knew God had something for me. And I thank God that I can stand in what God has given me to talk of his goodness and talk of his mercy and to talk of his love. So that was Mary and Judas. And then in verse 6, this he said, not that he cared for the poor because he was a thief and he had the bag and bear what was put there. And Jesus said, let her know this day, this day, she kept this this day. Just for me. Just think God has something for you on this day. He has something for you on this day. Jesus said, leave her alone. She did this for my burial. Leave her alone. She did this for my burial. Because the poor you're going to have with you always. And I thank God for Pastor Smith because he allowed me to, to see exactly what it means to be poor. When I went to Haiti, even after the earthquake, my eyes became open. So I know what it means to be poor, to live poor, to be hungry when you need some food. I know what it means because I see it with my own eyes again. I'm talking about seeing is believing. I don't have to just uh, believe what pastor says. I saw from my own self, my own eyes that they didn't have. Amen. It touches my heart when I think about it. For the poor you have with you always. But Jesus said, Sister Mary, it's going to come a time I'm not going to be here. This is seven days. This is Jesus' last days with his people. His last days of his people, and he wasn't going to be here no longer. He needed them to understand who he was because he had a mission for every one of them. And he has a mission for us, not just to come to church and sit down, but he has something for us to do. He has something to do for us to do. And then in verse 10 it says, But the chief priests consulted 
that they might also put Lazarus to death. Isn't that something? Jesus and raised Lazarus from the dead and they're trying to kill him again. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead and here they are trying to kill his friend again. Don't that remind you of our haters? God that delivered us and Brother Spivey had mentioned about the near death of his mom and dad. And how many people I'm sure probably said the same, y'all going back to that church? Y'all almost is dead, y'all come. I'm just being honest right here. Amen, because seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. Here is God done delivered you from where he delivered you from. And then you're coming back to church, you had the virus, and you're going back where you probably got the virus from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Here he is one put Lazarus to death. Amen. That's sad. When our friends don't want to see us doing better. That's sad. He is, Lazarus already gone. Three days. Jesus raised him back. Make sure you, oh, he dead. It was been three days. And no, no. The fairy, you got to be careful who you're hanging around with. Be careful who you think who your friends are. And these preachers that's on television, you have to be careful who you're listening to. These were the scribes and the Pharisees. These were religious leaders. They the ones supposed to do everything. Be careful who you listen to on TV. What the Bible say? Everybody say, Lord, Lord. Amen. Be careful who you listen to. He said, by this, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Reminds me of Joseph. Reminds me of Joseph. His brothers put him into the pit. Amen. What do you say? God meant it. You meant it for one thing, but God meant it for another. Now here it is. You talking about putting Lazarus to that? Wait a minute. What did what did that verse just say? Because by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. You may mean it for one thing, but God meant it for another. Amen. Again, be careful who you're hanging around with. Somebody might put you in a ditch. But what God has for you, guess what? Hey, man, it's for you. What God has for you, it is for you. Don't worry about what somebody in the church say. My hurt, my hurt, oh, Lord Jesus. My hurt came from the church people. Pharisees, Sadducees, church hurt. When you come to church to get help, relief. My hurt came from the church. But guess what? That only made me stronger. Amen. That only made me stronger. So church hurt is to make you stronger, not to dwell in that hurt. Again, they tried to put, my Lord, kill Lazarus after Jesus and wrote, huh? Amen. God is a good God. But guess what? It said many believed on him as a result of this. Many believed on him. Many believed on Jesus as a result of his haters. Amen. Many gonna believe on Jesus because they see you. They see you risking yourself coming to church on this holy week. You've been to church five days, four days? Virus, corona? Amen. 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 People don't want to see you doing good. Sister Patty, don't worry about people that want to see. His last was already dead, and they're trying to crucify him again. Amen. When well, God deliver us from our pain and afflictions, let's remember, amen, that sometimes our pain and our afflictions, Sister Tadnock, can only make us strong. Because church hurt only made me strong. Amen. Only made me stronger. Amen. I don't give a devil most of the time, and I don't preach. I don't preach about the devil. Because the devil don't have no control over Avis. Amen? Amen. And it says in verse 16, these things understood not his disciples, but when Jesus was glorified. When we look at the book of John, John is different from all the other gospel writers. So here it is. When you search, when you go through John, you see that John already in some of these verses, he already had Christ crucified. Because John sometimes wrote in the present, the past, and the future. 
So he said, these things understood not his disciples at first, but when Jesus was glorified, see, he was glorified. Then remember they these things that were written. Sometimes, again, it takes us to have our troubles and our problems for us to realize who Jesus really is. Sometimes we're going through difficulties in our life. It's just for us to realize that it was never you in the first place. It was always Christ. It was always him. Amen. It was always Christ. We think it was us because we paid our bills. No. Somebody had the same money you had, but it was Christ that allowed you to pay your bills. Amen. And not go to the casino. God allowed you to pay your bills. Amen. And not do other things. So we can't worry ourselves about what other people did or what other people are doing. And verse 18 said, but this cause the people also met him as they heard that he had done these things, that he had done these miracles. So can you imagine here Jesus is riding on a donkey? It didn't say donkey, but you know, we got kids here, so I'm going to say the donkey. But this is a time in Jerusalem when everybody came to remember the Passover. Amen. When they're on a post, with the blood on a post, the angel, the death angel will pass over the Jews. So here, Jesus right on it. Jesus could have rolled like most of them at this time. But this is a, a, a continuous, a every year event. The, fair, the, uh, the scribes, the Pharisees, and everybody getting together to go to this, um, I'm going to say party. I'm going to say party. We, 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 we in times, we got young people here, and I'm going to say party. Everybody was coming to go to this party. And this party had all kinds of religious leaders. They had big shots, little shots. So here it is, Jesus. They thought, the Jews thought that Jesus wanted to be a, what, a conqueror. They thought Jesus was going to come riding on something, a, a horse, a white horse to show, I'm the conqueror. No. Jesus came lowly on a little donkey that never been written before to show his humanity, amen, to show his humanity. Humanity. He said, the Pharisees therefore said to Moses, but see how you prevail nothing. Behold the world. Again, there was a whole lot of people during this time. He said, the whole world is gone after. Wait a minute, we came here to crucify Christ. And now the whole world is going after him. Because you meant it for one thing, but God meant it for another. Then he said, there were certain Greeks that came up to worship at this feast. I'm going to say at this layman turn at this party for the young people. Everybody was there. They go and tell them to this party. And here it is. It says, certain Greeks came unto him to worship. The same came, therefore, to Philip. Then I was with Philip. You hardly ever hear anything about Philip, correct? The same came, therefore, to Philip, which was a Bethsaida of Galilee, and designed him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. We come here to see Jesus. We come here to see Jesus. We come here to see the man that the scribes and Pharisees want to crucify. I come here want to see the Lord. I come to church because I know God has done so much for me. I want to see the Lord. I'm here at New Baptist Baptist Church on this Thursday night because I want to see the Lord. I want to know what the Lord has for me. Amen. I want to give God back something because God has been so good to me. Hey, man, he's been so good. So here is Philip. You know, so I said, why are they coming to Philip? Then Philip, why y'all just couldn't, just like a preacher. Some preachers, you can't get to them. They got bodyguards. And they got all these different armor bears. I want to see the preacher. I need help. I don't... But this is protocol. So here it is, um, Andrew, Philip. And as I was studying, they were saying that, um, that they probably went to Philip because Philip was a Greek. And then they went to Andrew. Andrew, you don't hear much about Andrew either. And as I was studying, what I did hear about Andrew is that he was a what? Soul winner. Andrew wasn't playing. He did what God instructed him to do to be a soul winner. How many of us are soul winners for Christ? How many of us can bring someone to Christ? Amen. If we can't bring no one to Christ, our common is in vain. Amen. Church should be filled. As much as crisis is going on right now, 
Every church in America should be full. Every church, especially during this time, every church. The Bible says you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. Every church should be full. But as pastor often said, some people don't believe in heaven and they don't believe in hell. So it's going to have to come a time when they're going to have to choose ye this day whom they shall serve. And then in verse 21, it said, The same came therefore to Philip, again, which is a Bethsaida of Galilee, and designed, saying, Sir, we will see Jesus. Philip come and tell Andrew, and again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour cometh that the Son of Man should be glorified. Now, in the book of John, many times Jesus said what? My hour is not yet come. Even at the wedding, my hour is not yet come. With the uh, uh, Phoenician, my hour has not come. But as we read in verse 23, it said, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Now is the time. Before was it, but now is the time. Now is the time for those who don't know Christ to accept him. Accept him as their personal savior. Jesus said, the hour is come. Now is the hour. Amen. Now is the hour, not tomorrow. Now is the hour. Because guess what? He said he came to seek and to save that which was lost. When the Greeks came, the Gentiles, they were known as Gentiles, and they came, his mission was fulfilled. Amen. He did, and he conquered, and he did everything that he needed to do to reach everybody. He came to the Jews, but the Jews didn't receive him, amen? So here he is with the Gentiles. None of the Gentiles are here, amen? He said, oh, my hour has come, amen? Now it's time for me to be glorified. Everybody who I tried to witness to, everybody who I tried to come, now is the time. The Gentiles are seeking Jesus. How many of you have taught somebody and told them, come see Jesus? I know a man, amen? I know a man. Now Jesus, what did Jesus say? Now is the time. The hour has come. The Greeks, the Gentiles, they want to see Jesus. What happens if we all want to just come to church to see Jesus? Amen. Not to see our neighbors, not to see our friends, but to see Jesus. Hallelujah. If only I can get to come and see Jesus, my day would be all right. My week would be all right. I might be sick in my body, but I want to see Jesus. And if I know I see Jesus, amen, everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. My life, my health, my strength, everything will be all right. Because what did Jesus say? Jesus said, the hour is come. The Gentiles are here. Now is the time for me to be glorified. Now is the time for me to leave. I did, I said, and I was with who I was with. Now is the time. Amen. Let this be your time. If you don't know the Lord today, amen. Let Jesus be glorified in you. The world came to this feast. The world came to this party. Now that everybody is here, the Jew, the Greek, oh, hallelujah. Thank God, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you waited for the Gentiles, Lord. You came and you did all that you was able to do, Lord, to bring us to you. We thank God. Give God the glory. Give God the praise. The Gentiles came to see Jesus. And because the Gentiles came to see Jesus, he said, now is the time for me to be glorified. Now is the time for me to go. I'm ready to do what my father asked of me to do. Hallelujah. To seek and to save that which is lost. He came for the lost sheep. Amen. Now the lost sheep is here. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus has been glorified. Oh, praise the Lord. Lord, we thank you, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you because you waited for us, Lord. We thank you, oh God, that you gave us another chance, Lord. Oh, hallelujah.
to get it right. Hallelujah. Oh, he said, now is the time. Now is the time for you to say yes to the Lord. Now is the time for you to get it right. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Now is the time. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Now is the time. Because seeing is believing. Hey, Amen. Seeing is believing. But what did Jesus say to John? Well, hallelujah. John 20, 29, I believe. He said, blessed is the man who have not seen but believe. We have to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Amen. We have to believe that Jesus died and he rose again. Hallelujah. We have to believe. Hallelujah. That's the only way we're going to see him if we believe. Amen. We're going to see him. It's like that wind that blows. We don't see the wind, but we know it's there because he's blowing on us. Hallelujah. Let Jesus in your heart today. If you don't know the Lord, let him in your heart today. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Amen. I thank God for this opportunity. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you. I thank you, Sister Patty, for that song. I thank you. Oh, I thank Sister Esther Smith for her song. I thank you. Oh, I thank God for giving me another chance. Oh, hallelujah. Let's just stand and lift the name of Jesus. You hear, you might as well praise him. You hear, you might as well say, Lord, I surrender. Oh, I surrender. He said, now is the time to be glorified. Now is your time. Amen. To give God your all in all. Give him your heart. Give him your heart. Amen. Give him your heart. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. I see you in a long time. Thank you, brother. God is a good God. Give him your heart. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. Give him your heart. He said, now is the time. Give him your heart. Now is the time. The time is now. Not tomorrow, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now is the time. Amen, amen. Come on and give God some praise. Lord, we thank you for this word that was given. God, we ask that you let it fall fresh on our ears and in our hearts, God that we might see your glory through this word, Heavenly Father. Lord, teach us how to apply it to our lives, God. Change our hearts, change our minds, the way we think, God. For in you we live, we move, and we have our being. And we thank you for this word in Jesus' name. The doors of the church are open. This is your opportunity to give your life to the Lord. You no longer have to wait. Amen. Let's put our hands together for this sister that's coming today. Amen, amen. We thank God. What's your name, sister? Sister Andrea, let's praise God for Sister Andrea, who has decided to give her life to the Lord. Amen. Now, if heaven is jumping around, we definitely should be shouting, thanking the Lord. With all the stuff going down here on this earth and anywhere we could be doing whatever, but this young lady came today to give her life to the Lord. And for that, we say thank you. Amen. Even if it's only just one, this whole week was worth just that one soul. Because she's no longer trapped in the world, but she's opening up her heart and her mind to give it to Jesus. And don't think just because you've been saved and you've been coming to church that we don't need to be reconciled sometimes. Sometimes we come to church out of routine and we lose that special connection with God because we do it just because we've always done it. But God makes all things new. Amen. God is not an ordinary God. He is not a routine God. The the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and liberty means freedom. So I can move around about and do what I need to do in Christ. Amen. We are no longer bound by Satan and what he wants us to think and bound by our transgressions and our sins and everything that we did in our past. God says he'll throw that into the sea of forgetfulness. Amen. 
no longer to remember. What Jesus did on Friday cancels out all our sins, amen? And because of that, we are saved. Because of that, we are free. And because of that, we have the gift of eternal life. How many of you glad about having eternal life? That I'm just living this life just to live again. Because I'm going to get a chance to stand before Jesus, the man that died for me, the man that kept me, the man that loved me, the man that blessed me. Amen. Have I got any witnesses out there? Amen. 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 Well, we just thank God for this awesome, awesome preacher and this awesome, awesome word. We thank you and God bless you. And now we're going to have communion. Does everybody have a communion cup? If you don't have a communion cup, just go ahead and raise your hand. Amen, amen. Sister Richardson is coming. If you need in communion, just go ahead and raise your hand. Sister Richardson, I need one. Amen, amen. This is a sacred time. A time where we want to consecrate ourselves and put our hearts and our minds in the right place. And it's nothing that we take lightly because of what Jesus had to go through. And you make it personal. Yes, he did it for the world, but he did it for you. And when you think about all the wrongdoings you've done and all the thoughts that you've had that you know wouldn't please God, and yet he still blesses you and he still keeps us and he still loves us and he still provides for us. That's enough to open up your heart to ask the Lord to soften it, right? When someone does something for you and they show you they love you and they make you feel loved, you can't do nothing but love them back. And Jesus makes it so easy to love him back because of his faithfulness to us. And if you don't know about it, that's okay. Just keep living because the Lord will reveal himself. And this this liquid that we have is representation of the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed for us on Calvary's cross. And through it, it is the connection to God the Father. This bread that we break is representation of Jesus' body. That he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw men unto me. And so it was necessary that Calvary happened so that we could be drawn to the Father. So what we do is not for show, it's not for demonstration, but is in an act of worship. It is sanctified, it is holy. And when we don't treat it as such, we drink and eat damnation on our souls. So if there's unforgiveness in your heart, I ask that you not take part of this because with Jesus, there is much forgiveness. He, in fact, said, how you forgive others, I'll forgive you. So if you have an unforgiving heart, there's nothing wrong with asking the Lord to forgive you, number one. And number two, give you a soft heart and a forgiving heart. Amen? And so with this wine, with this bread, we partake in Jesus' suffering. Before we take this, we'll say the prayer of preparation, and it will also be our benediction. Father God, we ask that you prepare our hearts and our minds, Lord, for what it is that we are about to do. God, we ask that you change our way of thinking, God, that you transform it and that you renew it into what you would have it to be, God, that it will cause us to live right, be right, and do right, Heavenly Father. God, we ask that any grudge that we have, God, help us to forgive them. Father, as you forgive us, help us to let it go. Because the longer we hold on to it, the more power it has over us. And God, we want to release those things that are old and behind us and press toward what's new. For you make all things new, Heavenly Father. And we thank you and we believe you for it. And they all eat.
and they all drink. And they went out singing a hymn. Thank you. 